Central Otago Rail Trail is 150 kilometres long. An hour by road from Queenstown is a place called Clyde, where shortly we'll be picking up our bikes and starting our journey. But on the way, we couldn't resist the temptation to drop into one of the great wineries of the region. We had made plans to visit one of New Zealand's top vineyards, Mount Difficulty. It was a sub-region of central Otago known as Bannockburn. Bannockburn has a very warm microclimate and was known by miners as the heart of the desert. Our oldest grapes are sort of 20-odd 20, 20 odd years old this year. We have somewhere around 80% of what's grown in the industry here is Pinot. So, and that's what sort of really put the industry on the map right from the early 90s. While Stu looked ready for a Flanders classic cycling race, Steve and I needed to be kitted out to complete the trail over the next three days. Walking into trail journeys was the first sign that this biking thing was a serious business. I mean, the trip was all about kind of like actually getting away and getting out from my comfort zone a little bit. It's been a long time since I've actually been on a bike. Probably the last time was when I was doing my paper round when I was like eight. So, you know, for me, and uh, just another great way to see New Zealand. And when you get those opportunities, um, you've got to make the most of it. Yeah, like, yeah it's easy going, it's in the track and the surface is really nice. Quite fast. Um, you've only been done, we're only on 30 odd k, so that's obviously we've done the hills or anything. But um, it's really nice. It's, it's actually it's except it's easier than I thought it'd be. <laughs> no, no, most of us hadn't been on a bike for about 20 years until <laughs> <laughs> until two or three months yeah. ago. <laughs> yes. scenery changes so much. So one minute you're in really rocky terrain and you think you're in the back of Arizona or somewhere and there's Indians going to pop out the back of it. Next minute you're in like rolling Tuscan type hills and then there's like sand and there's just the variety is just amazing. Good, good fun. Uh, the back end of it's a lot better. Bit of downhill, bit of variety, and uh, you can get a little bit of speed up. So uh, Stu nearly kept up with me on that part. Yeah, it's good, good fun. <laughs> Don't know about those steam trains, they're not supposed to climb hills, but there's some little hills there. Interesting. According to, according to Stu, the Pelotons and the Tour de France cruise along at 50 k's at their slowest. Well, we've probably reached about 40 k's. They seem pretty pacey to me, so those guys, respect, really. I must say, just quietly while Steve's not around it, um, choose a bit of a right on that bike, I think. He does okay. Kicks in another gear when he wants to. He's a dapper dresser, but he's also quite a shifty, shifty bike rider. There's no doubt about that. We're off to a place called Ofa, just off the bike trail. Increasingly, we are seeing how important mining has been to the history of the region. Most places here are named after the hometowns or heroes of the settlers. Whether it be the very British Lord Ranfurly, the very Australian Bendigo, or Bannockburn of the Scottish Highlands. But standing out with true uniqueness was the Hebrew name of Ophir. 
Ophir was the place that King Solomon found the gold that sheathed the Temple of Jerusalem. So someone had a cryptic mind in naming this village. Apparently, the local Māori knew that gold was there, but valued far more highly greenstone, which they used for tooling, jewellery and weaponry. Day one of the cycling journey took us just over 37 kilometres from Clyde to Omakau. This seemed a good distance for someone not used to being on a bike for long periods. 